Hello everyone and welcome back to Siggy for the second fourth of the game. As I said, it is meant to be beaten in under 30 minutes. There's an achievement for that. At least, there is on the Steam version. I, I'm sure it's an achievement on the PS4 version I'm playing, but I have achievements disabled. Because I don't want to see those. Anyway, something noticeable about Siggy as even, is that even though it's incredibly straightforward and, uh, one of the most linear games possible, it is still somewhat of a collectathon. There are so many things to collect. Uh, there are coins to collect, 100 of which get you a 1-up. You can collect the letters in Siggy's name, some of which are hidden away in secret areas. You can collect the secret areas, which count towards your final completion percentage, and there are secret, secret items, uh, some of which are listed in the instruction manual on the main screen, and some of which you just have to find yourself without any hints. So with the letters, coins, caves, and secret, secret items, that's at least a total of four different collectibles to look out for while you're jumping and shooting your way through the game. Here's one of the secret, secret collectibles right now, hidden in the base of this tree. As soon as we bust it open, there's a gold chalice. I feel all the hidden rooms and collectibles that add an extra element to Siggy are part of what make it so fun. Like, if it were just a normal run and jump and smash the attack button sort of platformer, that'd be fine. But I think the extra layer of secrets and collectibles really adds to the experience because it gives your brain more to do. And it just makes the game generally more satisfying. Because not only is collecting things fun, but the things you collect are easy to find and quite abundant. And they make fun noises. Again, it would probably feel a bit weird to call Siggy a collectathon, but I'm tempted to do that just because it's a weird thing to say. You know. Now we have the bad enemies, as I'm sure you've noticed quite a while ago. We just have to jump and attack them. Simple as that. We'll get more devastating flying enemies later, don't you worry. And they will be the flying enemy everyone hates most. Another positive of this game being so short is that it's clearly meant for you to have, like, a map of the game burned into your subconscious on repeat playthroughs. Like, you're clearly meant to have the game memorized to such a degree that you know exactly where every secret, every letter, and every enemy is. And it's quite easy to memorize it in that fashion, because the levels are so short. And I like that unlike other... 2D retro platformers where memorization is often required. The memorization is not required in this case, it just kind of happens naturally when you play the game more than once because of how short it is. You become intimately familiar with it. No amount of memorizing was necessary for me to complete the game. As I said, the game is super easy to play. And I managed to finish the game with plenty of lives left. And when I say easy to play, I don't just mean it's easy in difficulty. Because even though that is most certainly the case, it's also easy in the sense that it controls really, really well. Like, if you miss a jump- oh, here's that other flying enemy type I was talking about. This bird flies over our head and tries to shit on us. It's kinda hard to jump on it because it zips around so much. Anyway, when I talk about being easy to play, I also mean it's very easy to control. Like, if you ever miss a jump, it's just because you have butterfingers or you were overthinking some shit. Because this game is perfectly responsive. Now, you could accurately say the game's responsiveness is part of the game's easy difficulty. I would not disagree, I think that is also the case. But a lot of 2D platformers are intentionally floaty or loose in order to make them more challenging. In Siggy's case, it just responds immediately, completely accurately, to your inputs. And that makes a lot of platforming challenges that would normally be difficult a lot easier. And it makes the game more playable for, you know, general audiences. I like that at the start of this level you're just hurled into this battlefield full of enemies. You may have noticed that the further we've gotten into the game, the more abundant the enemies have gotten. The enemies aren't necessarily great threats on their own, so the further you get into the game, the more and more of them get bunched together. And destroying them all in big groups with the scatter knife gun we have right now, I find is immensely satisfying, especially the way the screen shakes when you destroy them. 
Now, I'm well aware thwumpy isn't a word, but if I were going to describe the way this game's combat feels, it would be thwumpy. And I mean that in a good way. Whenever you hit an enemy and they blow up and the screen shakes, the noise it makes and the way the screen shakes, that feels thwumpy. It feels very satisfying to blow up the enemies. Like, immensely so. It's not Muso Games' level of satisfying, but it's kind of unprecedented for a 2D platformer, let alone one that's this easy to play. I think the satisfaction in blowing up so many enemies with such satisfying sound effects really, uh... It's quite entertaining by itself, but mixed with the collectathon elements and the platforming challenges, it makes the game as a whole a lot better. So this is probably my favorite boss. Uh, you can still tank it, just like all the others. The idea is to hit the top section of the pipe on front of the steel horse, as you're seeing. The steel horse charges at us, and when it backs away, it shoots what I assume is flaming coal out of the top, which we can easily avoid. And uh, then enemies will spawn and come down and try to attack us. This boss is also quite easy. Maybe the easiest boss, potentially even easier than Blind John if you don't get fucked by this crow thing like I'm about to be. But this one's quite easy, it's over fast, it feels good, and there's no point at which you can't hit the boss. Most of the time, the bosses have some period of time where you can't hit them. Not this one. You can just hit this one all the time. 